Right, so I spent far too much money on this boxed Midland 76900 base station. Now you already know we have a Midland 76900 base station. That one is going to become our new living room base station. That's the one we go over to when we do the on the air test and the existing radio there, the Harrier CBHQ, will go in the chapel we've had built. So, this, not quite complete, we've only got one insert. Oh dear, this is going to be not so easy to get out. Oh dear, the nasty smell of of fags. And I went to collect this personally from 60 odd miles away because I'm not trying to save whew, not trying to save £12.95 postage. I'm trying to not get it more broken. And we've got the mic there. Middle and mic. Uh, in the post. It doesn't matter about compensation, does it? It doesn't bring things that a 40-year-old buy. And uh, apart from the odd scratch there, I'm going to put the box out of the way for now. So this is supposed to be fully serviced. And it's supposed to be 40 channel and not be messed with, but who knows? What we will have to do is still change the capacitors in the power supply. So, there we are, that looks nice. So I'm going to have to take the bottom off, aren't I? But I think we'll take the top off first, so that I don't put it on its lid and, and scratch it because it is in, in nice condition. Uh, you'll be aware these were 369.99 in 1982 when they were new and that was an awful lot of money it's an awful lot of money to somebody like me now but back then that was an awful awful lot of money and you need to know of course it's a cybernet 134 so we were doing the rotel 220 on the last repair and it's exactly the same in it so you do get the extra two receiver stale, stale, re receiver stage um, coils on the base stations that you don't get on the mobiles. Uh, the bigger mobiles like the Roto 240, the Harvard 420M, some Roto 230s, not all, have the extra receive coil, but not two extra receive coils. These are 12 volt operable as well, and these, I say, were made by Cybernet, whereas the Midlands at the time were made by Maxon for the Precision Series we had here, the 2001, 3001 and 4001. And of course the 77810 Ready Rescue and that handhold, is it handheld in 75, 720? Anyway, something like that. So hopefully this will be the moment of truth and hopefully there's going to be nothing in there which is naughty. It's not that dusty either. Oh, it doesn't half smell of nicotine though. I'm going to power it up and see what the power supply is actually running at. In fact, I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're going to open it up. I'll do the underneath. I'm really looking forward to doing the on the air test of it to this because when we go over to the base station at the end we'll be putting our 76900 on for the first time so we'll have this one on the bench here we'll have that one in the living room and it will be across from 176900 to the other 76900 and I just think that's amusing
if it doesn't work any better than the Harrier CBHQ or the York 869 they all have the extra stage it's totally cosmetic and at the time you had to think well do I pay £129 for a CBHQ or £369 for a Midland 76900 and that extra money or all it's buying me is a very very nice front panel that's all you're buying so let's have a look at this so I can't see anything that shouldn't be there I'm going to have to check that's the right capacitor. I thought it was bigger than 2200 microfarad. I thought it was 3300 microfarad. But there you are, you see I might be wrong. We will be checking safety on the plug. The plug is no longer legal in the UK. It doesn't mean they have to come off, but um, it doesn't have the shrouded pins. But for now, we'll get it plugged in. I don't need to tread carefully with this because it's been bought as a working set. So we'll test it, test it, we'll plug it into the test equipment. January 1982, serial number 9226. Okay, so we just need to plug it now into the extension speaker. No, that's not the extension speaker. That's a... What's that doing there? Extension speaker. And we'll switch on. Now, I said it's had LEDs put in. Now, you... I'm not going to reverse that because I've pushed it off again. These meters, they go discolored with the heat from ordinary bulbs and that, that is something which I accept. So you do really need to be changing them for LEDs, but you don't, I mean they're a bit uh, bright white, but not blue, definitely not blue. So the receive light works on here, which is also handy. Uh, what am I looking for? I'm looking for the mic, where did I hide it? So today I've been to the radio rally at Newark. So the first time in about three years. And I bought a DNT new old stock in a box of the super tuned variety. But it's new old stock because it's never worked from new. It must have worked when Cleotone bulk modified them into the super tuned version, but it hasn't worked since. So that was one thing I've bought. There's no mic with that. Um, I still can't find the mic for this. And the other thing I bought was a modified for 10 meters SMC Oscar 2. That is the dreary set. It's not like the Oscar one, which is a really, really good set. It's not the good set. But I did only pay £8 for it with mounting bracket and mic. And I know it will have to be modified back to be a CB radio. I know that's going to take some work. But uh, I, I want to do that. And what else did we buy? Oh, yes, uh, Maxcom 4E. I've had a request that we demonstrate the VCO on the Maxcom chassis. I've got a friend with a Midland 2001 and he's struggling with the VCO and the trouble with those is that the components aren't inserted usually for checking the VCO. There's four parts you have to put in because when they do it at the factory they do it on a pin jig so they don't need the components and by not putting those four components in obviously it saves money. So what we're going to do is insert the missing components and go through the VCO with a fine tooth comb. So I bought a scruffy looking Midland, um, sorry, Maxcom 4E. So that was the third set we bought. Bought a couple of 
edgewise meters and it may be that we can put the dials the, 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 the you know the back card in with the s9 and that to, because they labeled one to five um, but they were only a pound each so I thought uh, and they came from Burkitt's so that's uh, something if we need more and they work out for us we can buy some more so there we go that's told you so we want picture in picture on and let's see now we're going to take frequency with a pinch of salt because I've only had the test set on 10 minutes the radio is actually doing just over 5 watts which isn't acceptable you know, you're th the point is you're thrashing it, and it's not going to do five watts at both ends of the band. Let's see what it's doing on channel 40. It's actually still doing five watts, and it's still doing five watts on channel one. Well, I've, that's told me a lie, hasn't it? But uh, the point is, we do not want to thrash it, and we don't want to operate outside of the legal limits. Um, you're not if that game to your hundred yards, that's about all you're going to gain between four and five watts. So. Um, we can't see any dodgy capacitors. I'm going to verify that capacitor, and we will before we do any proper alignment uh, with the transmitter. I'm going to make sure that power supply has had the capacitors replaced. But in the meantime, we can start off by checking the VCO. So, as ever, I'll have to get my instructions out for that. I'll put this back to. I'm going to put the camera back to its normal position is there but with it being a big set we're gonna to have to kind of manipulate things around a little bit so with the usual Aldi multimeter or is it the little one this one are we on a negative earth or are we on a floating chassis let's see be honest that looks like it's floating uh, sorry it looks like it's negative yeah that is a negative uh, so we'll put the prod somewhere uh, where we can get a grip get a grip so getting the instructions out because we can never remember memory and sieve um, so we're on, we start on channel 40 between test point one and ground we should have four volts on channel 40. There's channel 40, there's test point one. We've got 3.97 volts, that's spot on. So on transmit, oh, is it like this when you, I think you can turn off the extension speaker or something. Let's try that. Well, we can cope with that. So we should have three point. We should have four volts there as well. We haven't quite. So that's something we will adjust. So had we needed to adjust the receive, it's the coil there. We need to adjust the transmit very slightly, and it's the. I'm going to have to unplug that. It's really going to annoy me. Some sets do this. I can't even see where the plug is. It's there. If you don't get this right, you end up with channels missing in temperature extremes. So in receive, we've got 3.98. I've not adjusted that. In transmit, we've got 3.9. I have adjusted that. So that's a start. So we need to check this on channel 1. It's supposed to be between something like 1.8 and 2.5. And, and there we have on receive 2.3 and on transmit we have 2.29. So that's now spot on. I wouldn't say that was faulty. But it could end up with channels dropping out as it was. I'm not going to touch the transmitter any further um, until we've checked this power supply out. So, unusually, I'm going to go over to the receiver because we can do that with the power supply, however, it is. So, 2779125. Just dial that in on the signal generator. 
I'm going to have to see where we are on transmit frequency just so that I'm matching the transmit to the receive, etc. So we want camera 2. Let's go into transmit 2779099. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to trim that to be spot on frequency now. I'll probably have to adjust it later because the test set hasn't warmed up. And that certainly wasn't off frequency, but we'll just set it exactly. There we go. So now we can just do the receive 2779125. And we'll get a reading now off the sign up meter. So let's check the knobs are all in the right place. I'll put tone to center, um, RF gain to full. We'll put, a put the extension speaker back in. And in ex external speaker, squelch. There we go. And let's make a note of what we get. So we're going to adjust the amount of level on the signal generator until we get 12 dB on the synod meter, which is there. Then I can read off, and I'll show you the cut, the adjustments, the attenuator. We're at one there, and we're at point. We're at 4.7. So that really is very good. It's 0.47 microvolts for 12 dB sino. So, where's my pen? Just going to check transmit deviation just for the uh, just for the laugh while we're just making the note. Oh, take that out again. This is going to be frustrating. Wallow. It's three point two, which is rubbish. It's far too high. I wish people would get into the heads. It's not like AM, where you're trying to get to ninety five percent modulation. Um, if you go over the two and a half, it, unless people are receiving you on a fidelity thousand as wide as a barn door, then it's just going to chop. The more expensive a radio they're listening to you on, the more it'll be ch ch uh, 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 as it chops the edges off the fat guy going through the door. So there you are. So receive 0 0.47, 0 0.47 for microvolts for 12 dB. Synod. That's that. Just so we remember. So we're going to go through the receive right now. We'll take that back to the synod meter. And as ever, we'll drop that to about. I oh know, we'll do the detector first, won't we? We'll put the oscilloscope on. And actually switch it on. I'm going to put an S9 equivalent signal, 100 microvolts on the signal generator. Pop the bench light off. And we'll adjust the detector coil T12. Just get the volume somewhere for the right kind of size of trace. That was absolutely spot on. So turn that off, put the bench light back on, and go back to the synod meter. Once again, set that to about 4 dB and see if we can get anything extra out of the receiver. It's already beyond its specification, it works so well. Well, you know what, we've just gained another 100 yards range. I'll drop my attenuator to the next scale. So we've got the extra coil here. I 
can't tell you how much I dislike the smell of fags. That coil is absolutely spot on as it was. That was absolutely spot on as it was. That was absolutely spot on. Now we have this extra one, which you get on the higher models. Let's go to a bigger signal. That's it. Next IF. Next IF. There we go. The only one was out was it the uh, was it that one? Everything else was spot on. So we'll now get a new reading. Have I fixed it worse? 0 0.41 microvolts. No, I haven't. So we'll actually get another hundred yards now on receive. <laughs> okay so the other things we need to check is we're going to put an S9 signal on that's 100 microvolts put the attenuator on the inset picture we should have exactly S9 on the meter and it's just slightly above the S9 we'll deal with that oh no that's the transmit one that's the receive one So I've just dropped that a fraction. Squelch. So I like these so that when we turn the squelch to full it opens 100 microvolts. So if I set the signal generator a bit lower like 1 microvolt and now we turn the squelch to full of course it's going to squelch that out. So as we advance this 3 microvolts, 10 microvolts, 30 microvolts I want it to open at the next one. Oh, look, it doesn't. Does it ever open? No, it never opens. So a really big signal never opens the squelch when it's on full on this set, which is useless. So we need to back this off. That's the squelch preset. And now if we go to 30 microvolts, it's shut. And at 100 microvolts, it's open. So that's S9. It's really good, isn't it, if you have a squelch that never ever opens if you have it at full. Now we're going to do the opposite. I'm going to turn the signal drain to right the way down to 0 0.3 of a microvolt and switch it to standby. Turn the squelch down on the radio so the radio hisses and set the threshold on the radio. That hissing is the test set going through its times tables or whatever it does. So now we're going to put the signal generator back on and see when the squelch opens. So turn the attenuator, let's see. She's coming in at 0.5 of a microvolt, leaving at 0.41 of a microvolt. Never the best squelch in the world, but competent and nice and sensitive. So it's going to do scratchy corner very nicely, I'm sure. So as far as I can see, we've covered everything there is to cover. And the next thing to do is to go backwards and do the transmitter. Where did I put my Aldi multimeter? Little multimeter. Oh there, exactly where it should have been. So... Let's see how many volts this radio's house up. It's supposed to be 13.2, to be honest. So, where does it come in on these sets? Wow, it's 14.4. That's not showing in the screen, is it? 
Yeah, so they've got the power supply set too high so that it does more watts than it's supposed to legally do. That is the way to kill a radio, obviously. So I'll just, we're going to be changing these capacitors anyway. Uh, it's just a matter of that one and the big one. I just need to verify that that's supposed to be 2200 microfarads because I seem to remember it being bigger than that. So I'm going to go and do something else and we'll be back in a couple of hours and we'll finish this off and sort that power supply out. Right, so having checked with the service manual, it should indeed be 2200 microfarads. We have these in stock for just that reason. And then we've got 100 microfarads there. So hopefully, that's all as it should be. Tell you what, I'll pause the video. Right, so we're back up and running. The two capacitors changed there. 2200 microfarads, 100 microfarads. That's 25 volt rated, and that's what we've put back. I'd have probably gone up a little bit if we'd got one handy, but we hadn't. So we've put like for liking. And this is rated at 40 volts. What came out? Let's have a look. It was 35 volts. We're actually getting one that's the right physical size. So let's get this power supply set up. I don't like it as high as it is. So we've got 14.41. So hopefully with the preset we can pop that down, that's just difficult to get to. The diode's in the way. Try a different tool. Probably took me longer to set this up than the rest of the radio. Oh, well, in fact, 14.4 is the uh, kind of low voltage it does, so that must be where it should be. Uh, so what we'll do, we'll we'll set the we'll set the transmitter up as it's supposed to be. Oh, it does surprise me. We can turn it up. We can't turn it down. I don't think there's anything being modified. So, right, so here goes. Put picture in picture to there. So, we're setting for maximum. We're going to unplug that extension speaker, this time for good. Make sure we're on channel 20, so at 5.1 watt, we're on peak on each of these. Try and be quick, I don't like the PA being thrashed like this. So very quickly we want these on maximum maximum which it was maximum which it was 
a maximum which it was so this was absolutely maxed out which is atrocious notice I'm feeling the heat sink so L4 needs to be adjusted for clockwise for 4.4 watts I'm very I've never seen one which is over power that's tracked on all 40 channels the same power and that's why I suspected the power supply was wrong so here we go we want to drop that to so clockwise for 4.4 watts and then anti-clockwise the service manager says for 3.8 watts but in fact we'll be doing 4 3.8 because they want them not to exceed the legal limit so 4 watts we're entitled to and so that's where it is so now we'll see whether we still have the uh, channels tracking to the same power so channel 20 we know is 1 watt channel 40 is a smidgen over 1 watt and channel 40 is a smidgen under 4 watts so that's absolutely well within where we're supposed to be I wasn't expecting that as I say I really thought they'd uh, ramped up the power supply thrashed it but in fact they thrashed the PA so what transistors has this got 2SC 1909 for the output. Can't see that one. It can vary. There's, there's half a dozen which they can use on on this um, on this chassis. So let's see whether the radio works on low power. So we've done high power. So switch to low power. Radio should now do 0 0.4 watts. We'll switch the test set from high power, which is 30 watts, to low power, which is 3 watts. He's actually doing 1.3 watts, which doesn't help me at all. So we'll pop that down. Slightly dirty. We often are these presets. And with the smell of fags coming off this set. So that's now low power set correctly. So we'll go back to high power. Just check. I'm slightly high on frequency now. We've warmed up. So we'll just trim that. I'm going to check because, in view of what's happened to this, I'm going to put the spectrum analyzer on and just make sure we've got any any shenanigans there now the SWR meter which is built in I'll just check they've got this right so I'm just going to yeah I can't show you this because it means tipping the setup so calibrate there's my set point reflect just see if we can get a bit nearer one to one see with the dummy load that's what we're trying to be seeing as near to one to one as possible so we've recalibrated that that's fine now the meter on the front again I've got to try and tip this if you can see uh, it's the extreme left meter. It's banging across to beyond 5 watts. So I'll just set that so it actually reads 4. 1, 2, 3. Which is there. Good. Deviation next. So I want the feedy backy one, I'm good at explaining these things, to centre position and then we'll work with that for deviation. So we'll use the little 
oscillator as usual, which I'll try not to scratch the front with. I'm showing you the wrong meter. And we just need to pop that down when I get the right one. We'll try it there. Wow, that's a bit low. Yes, Mr. Chippy. So we'll just try again. Wow, spot on. So we've got a 2.2 .2 average and absolute maximum of 2.5. We brought that down so we can't uh, be having that going over the top. Is that everything? I think that's everything, isn't it, folks? Yeah. I've done it topsy-turvy, as I said, because I needed to service the power supply. So there we are. So the modification with the LEDs, is, you know, it's done nicely. Uh, it's an acceptable colour. I'd have liked it a little bit um, of, a, of a different colour temperature. It's a bit brilliant white for me, but, um, you know, it's, it's fine. So we've got four watts. We've got excellent receive. We've got it on frequency. It, but it wasn't off anyway. That's neither here nor there. So we've done that to 2.2 to 2.5. That's been done. So, good result. And it hasn't had anything silly done to it. So that's good. So let's just check the... Let's just check if PA is working. Switch. Uh, we'll plug that into the PA jack. If I can just see which one it is. So PA, here we go, you've got PA gain as a separate entity. Testing one, two, testing one, two, three. That's absolutely fine. And in that mode we've got PA gain and we lit up for PA and the rest of the meters and things have gone out. So go back to CB, does the dimmer work? Well because these are drawing less current than the original bulbs, there isn't that much difference which is going to happen. There's no point no altering that. It is what it is. So just check my transmit light. Yes. I've never seen a mod light work, so I don't know whether this one does. Wallow. Actually it does. Don't even know if that's on camera. But the receive one they don't often work. So yes, so, oh, te check the 10 dB light, yeah, that works. So uh, yeah, I can't see any. It's funny that the paint's coming away but, uh, from the calibrate control as if that's been used a lot. The scratches around the headphone socket, so wherever's, whoever's had it before, it's probably been a, a married person and uh, their wife said, you put headphones on that thing. So there we go. I'll put the lids back on. That'll take about 10 minutes and then we'll just plug the aerial in, see if we can hear anybody out there. Right, so I've had the spectrum analyzer right that spot on. Oh, is there enough aerial lead to tilt this up? One on a Roger. So it's Saturday afternoon about quarter to five. And we know this will receive up to 35 miles like any other good set will. Nineteen or Roger. Nineteen. 
No. Okay. We'll do an on the air test later. In the meantime, we'll swap our Harrier Base station for Midland 76900. And we're going to have that fun of talking from one of these to another of these. Doesn't get swisher than that. So there we are. Thanks for watching. Hope you found that enjoyable. I don't like sets which are being thrashed like that. It doesn't actually gain you anything. It's just he's going to cause demise of the the PA. And now these are 40 years old. They're expensive sets. I don't know. Are these the kind of people who do things to their motor car to make it accelerate faster. I, it just worries me. So there we are. Thanks for watching.